This video provides a brief overview of vector and raster GIS data formats and provides an overview of a few websites where these types of data can be downloaded for use in multiple projects. In this video, I'll give a brief overview of what the two file formats are and a brief introduction to how we use symbology to display vector data and how we use color ramps to display raster data. GADM is one of several websites where we can download vector files or shape files or polygon files of administrative boundaries. This is probably one of the best websites for downloading vector files of political boundaries of countries. To download data, we can click here on the Data tab. That will take us to the data page where we have the option of downloading by individual country or for the entire world. As a brief note, the file for the entire world is very large and takes some time to download. For this example, we'll download an individual country and we'll download Vietnam. We're given several options here to download uh, different kinds of GIS data. Today we're going to download the shape file. Uh, please note that you could also download two different types of R files, KMZ files which could be opened in Google Earth, or a GeoPackage file. Once our file has downloaded, we can unzip that file. And here you can see I have uh, several files indicating uh, different administrative levels from level 0, which is a single polygon file of the whole country of interest, uh, level 1, the province level, level 2, the district level, and level 3, the commune level for Vietnam. If we quickly want to evaluate or look at these files, I can select them, drag and drop them into QGIS, and here we can see those files from the highest resolution, admin level 3, down to level 2, down to level 1, down to level 0. So now we have four vector files that describe the political boundaries of Vietnam that we can use for future map making and analysis. Now let's look at a popular website for downloading raster data or global climate data. This is a website called WorldClim, found at worldclim.org. And they're currently working on a new version, 2.0. Uh, that's available for current climate. But if you're interested in data sets that deal with past, current, and or future climate, you can use the existing or older version 1.4. This is what's most commonly used in the literature. So let's take a look at the current conditions. And here we can see, uh, just as we had different options in GADM for downloading vector files, we have several types of grid files that we can download. The generic grid format, which you'll be able to open in a number of uh, GIS packages, and uh, ESRI grid files. So as a brief summary, we have two types of spatial data that we'll use in a GIS. Vector data, which are referring to points, lines, and polygons, are ways that we can draw shapes on the landscape to reflect specific points of interest or lines indicating areas of interest such as a road or a river and polygons such as areas of interest like a political boundary or a lake or water body feature. We also have raster data or raster files which are gridded files where every individual cell or pixel holds a single value. In the case of vector data with points, lines, or polygons, 
we may change the shape, size, and color of those features to change the meaning of those features on the map. For example, in the context of epidemiology, we may use red dots to refer to test positive cases, green dots to refer to case negative or test negative cases, and gray dots for unknown results or tests that weren't performed. In the case of water bodies, we may use thin blue lines for small creeks or streams and thick blue lines for large rivers. And for polygons, we may use green hashed areas for natural environments such as forests and blue polygons for water. With raster data, every individual cell has a single value, and that single value refers to one type of feature. Uh, in the example here, one might reflect uh, urban areas, two might refer to water, three and four may be two different types of forest indicated by two different colors of green, and five may refer to something like an, a bare soil or agricultural area. Notice what's important about raster is that every individual cell has a single value. In the case of our raster data, we may display changes in values using a color ramp where different colors indicate a gradation or a continuum of values from low to high. Here in the top left example, we have elevation, and we can see it goes from blue colors, very cold areas, to orange colors, very warm areas. Notice the same is true for temperature, very cold areas in light, very, uh, excuse me, for precipitation, from uh, less rain to more rain. And we can see that gradient across the U.S. Areas of the Southeast, Pacific Northwest, two areas well known for high amounts of rain in the U.S. In this example, we can put those two types of data together to make a single informative map. Here we can see the elevation of the world displayed as a raster file with areas in green, lower in elevation, and areas in brown to red, areas of higher elevation. Very quickly, we can see the Andes, the Rockies, the Himalayas, all very easily displayed on the map. In terms of our vector data, we can see here that we're mapping anthrax data reported to ProMed Mail, and we've subdivided this into two groups categorically, into animal outbreaks and human outbreaks. Animal outbreaks indicated in blue dots, human outbreaks indicated in yellow dots. So we can see that performing basic mapping functions can often require multiple types of data displayed simultaneously. And what's important from this demonstration is the availability of data online, such as GADM and WorldClim for vector and raster data respectively, and how to put those together, thinking about map symbology and color ramps.